So when you think of community, you probably bring images of one of two things. The place that you grew up, or if you're lucky, the place that you live now. Because by definition, the only things required for a community is a place and people, right? But what we know about community is that it's so, so much more if you're talking about a healthy community, a vibrant community, a growing community. So what you want is the place and the people that have something more in common than simply where they are. Common belief system, shared values, a purpose bigger than themselves so that the individual needs are set aside for the greater needs of the community. We yearn for community in this country. And we, when we don't have it, we miss it. I, not bragging, I believe I hit the community jackpot. I live in and serve Prescott, Arizona. Yay. <laughs> you can clap. <laughs> we do have a, a town square. It's called the Courthouse Plaza, and it's a big, beautiful courthouse made out of marble with the steps. It's got great lawns and tall trees, and it's a place where people gather. We have festivals there. We hold events there. We, people walk their dogs there every day. Sometimes they just lay in the grass and enjoy the afternoon sun reading a book. It is what I consider community. We also have, we're known for big blue skies, great mountain trails where you can hike and bike. We have tall pine trees and beautiful lakes. But that's about the place. Let me tell you about the people. People in the community of Prescott place a high value on education, on the arts, and music. We have a higher than average rate of volunteerism. We enjoy spirited civic engagement, and we love our kids. We love and value our kids. Just a couple of weeks ago, two organizations that serve our kids raised over $500,000. That's a big number <laughs> for anyone. It's a very big number for Prescott. And those generous donors felt like they were investing in the future of kids in our community. Now, I should tell you that we have more military veterans living in the city of Prescott than we do children under the age of 18. But we rally around our kids with our time and our treasure. We have 17 public, private, and charter schools. We have a boys and girls clubs. We have a um, big brothers, big sisters, a YMCA, more sports teams than you can count. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, youth camps. The list goes on and on. So with all of that investment in kids, why do we still lose kids? Those people that contributed those dollars a couple of weeks ago, they were investing in the future of kids in Prescott. Not just the smart kids, not just the well-behaved kids, not just the kids that like horses, all kids. And these are the same people that are incredibly forgiving when we don't reach kids, when we lose kids that we've been connected with because they drop out of school or they participate in criminal or drug use, or worse, suicide. The most visual manifestation of a loss of hope that we have. Our community forgives us for losing those kids. Me, not so much. And it's probably because of the work that I do. Because I see where that road leads, and I see how often it tragically ends, and I know we can do better. So about a year ago, a little bit less, the city of Prescott adopted Kids at Hope 
as our belief system, how we are going to do better for kids. Now, I've done this before, so I knew what to expect, but when you have all those great organizations with wonderful people that are very committed to their mission, what do you think the reaction is? Fear. What do you mean? I'm not doing enough. I need to do more. I need to reach more kids. I need to have different programs. So the first thing we did was alleviate, the, alleviate that fear. So if you represent Prescott Unified School District and your mission is every child every day, that doesn't change. What you add to that, though, is every child every day because we believe all kids are capable of success, no exceptions. The Boys and Girls Clubs create a path for a better future for kids. And we believe all kids are capable of success, no exceptions. The YMCA, very simple, strong mission, strengthening communities by believing that all kids are capable of su success, no exceptions. So we set aside that fear and we unified the community and all of those different organizations within the community. What have we learned this week about programs, right? Kids don't grow up in programs. They grow up in communities. And I want to introduce you to Kira to illustrate my next point. Kira is a second grader at Taylor Hicks Elementary School. She spends her after school hours and summers at Boys and Girls Clubs in Prescott. She, on Monday and Wednesdays, is part of a softball team at, through the YMCA, and I saved the best for last. I am Kira's big sister through the Yavapai Big Brothers Big Sisters program. So that's four community youth serving organizations that this little eight year old interacts with on an almost daily basis. How powerful is it when we're all believing in her success? When we're all seeing ourselves as the ace of clubs in her life and that we are all searching for her treasure, her talent, her intellect, and her skills. So this is Kira the day I met her, just a little bit over a year ago. This is the Kira I see today, the little girl that could not meet my eye, that wouldn't even verbalize what she wanted to do with our time together is now this little girl, and she is fierce, and she is confident, and she knows about time travel, and I dare anyone to change that for her. And I want everyone, every kid in Prescott to have that same thing. And I think you probably want the same for the kids in your communities. Now I think Rick mentioned I had a little bit of a head start on Kids at Hope, like 18 years ago, when I met Rick and I was introduced to Kids at Hope. So when it was brought to my community, I was one of the first ones to stand up and say, yep, I know that. Kids at Hope and what I learned about not only the belief system, but the practices around Kids at Hope profoundly changed the way I parent the way I grandparent, the way I police, and the way I lead others, the officers in my department, to police our community. It has influenced every conversation, every contact, and every relationship I've had with a child. And I want the same for you. So I think I'm going to have to look at my notes. Simon Sinek says, in order, a movement can only exist when people are willing to move and follow the direction of a, where a leader is pointing. 
Now, Rick Miller has been pointing a lot this week, right? Don't you agree? You can't take them home with you. I've tried. <laughs> you are the leaders, and you are those that will influence change in your community, and you will point people to that belief that all kids are capable of success, no exception. Thank you.